Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Octomore's fifth edition of their 10-year-old limited releases. Now, if you're interested at all in the third or fourth edition, go check out my friends over at Top Shelf Whiskey. It's a criminally underrated channel, and they do a great job. They reviewed both of them, and actually, it was very entertaining to watch those two. Uh, anyway, criminally underrated channel. So let's talk about this edition, however. So those of you that know Brook Lottie will know that they have three different expressions. They have the Brook Lottie Classic Lottie, which is something I recommend to anybody who wants to try whiskey. Then they have the heavily peated Port Charlotte. Now this is for less people, but still really honestly very approachable. As long as you don't hate smoke, you'll probably really, really like this one. And then they have the super heavily peated, which is the Octomore. And this is the stuff of legends, but it is not for everybody. Octomore typically releases three different versions of their whiskey every year. They have the 0.1, the 0.2, and the 0.3. This past year, in 2022, it was 12.1, 12.2, 12.3. Now, here's the thing. You're often not going to see any of these for under $200. You might be able to find it in the realm of $180. I've even seen it as low as $140. But me personally, anytime I saw those on the shelves, which was very, very minor, it was always over $200. And people scoop them up at that price because those who have had it know that it's worth that price. So... Let's talk about what's actually in the bottle. Distilled in 2010, it spent five years in first fill ex-American oak casks, then five more years in wine barrels from a bodega in northern Spain called Ribera del Duero. Then it was bottled at 56.3% ABV. It has a PPM of 90.3, which is a bit on the low side for an Octomore, and there were only 3,500 bottles produced. As for me getting this bottle, yeah, it wasn't easy. I actually ended up waking up at about 6 a.m. randomly one morning, and I got an email from Brook Lottie, because I'm on their mailing list, and they said, hey, we're you know putting this thing for sale, and if you want it, then go get it. So I clicked on the thing while I'm laying in bed, and I got in a queue. And I remember there being like 200 people in front of me, and I'm just like, there's zero chance I'm getting this. And the little ticker was ticking down, and then eventually it refreshed, and it brought me to a buying screen, and I was like, I'm actually going to get one of these. So I fill out all the form and the whole time I'm just like, what if while I'm filling this out, this out other people buy it? So I was like, type it really fast. And then I, uh, I went through the whole process and I remember it hanging on the purchase screen. Like I clicked buy and it was like $270 too. So I'm like, I don't want to hit it twice because it might purchase it twice by accident. So I'm just sitting there waiting and it was waiting and waiting and waiting like three minutes. It didn't time out. It just took forever. And then it went through and I was like, oh my gosh. I just got this bottle. I was so excited. I was on the Discord like, oh, guys, check out what I'm getting. Oh, my gosh. And there was somebody else in the Discord who was also buying it at the time. So it just worked out awesome. But anyway, that was my story of how I ended up getting this bottle. But like I said, it cost $270, which might be the most I've spent on a bottle of whiskey personally. So uh, it's worth it, though. I mean, in it, we'll get to that, though. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and taste this. <laughs> oh, man, I'm excited. Octomore is one of my happy places. So I have not had Octomore uh, really in years. And I'll, I'll tell you that story during the overall bit. But let's go ahead and give us a nose. Now, the funny thing that you're going to notice is like this is known for being heavily smoke influenced, just high PPM. It's going to smell like smoke. It's going to taste like smoke. It doesn't. I think the 10 years and I know I haven't smelled it yet. I'm just telling you things. So the 10 years in the barrel makes a big difference here. And it really mellows out the smoke. Because when I nose this. Yes, I'm not crazy. I don't have COVID. I smell smoke, <laughs> you know. So it's. It, it is there. But it's not the prevalent thing here. It's it's really. It's magnificent. So. <laughs> It's buttery, it's salty, it's fruity, which is crazy. I mean, it spends time in those in those sherry barrels, but it's sweet smelling, almost like a fruit cocktail, like pears and like those little red cherry chunks that are in there. It's really just syrupy and sweet. Like it's just, it doesn't smell like smoke. This isn't going to clear the room of, you know, your significant others who are not into whiskey at all, as some of the things I have drank have, some of the yard bags or the Lafroigs or the Lagavulins or the Port Charlotte. <laughs> it's just very, it's impressive that it's so well-rounded, and I'm, I'm sure that's because it's 10 years, because typical Octomore is only about five years aged, and so it's still a bit young, um, still a little raw. And they like it that way. They like it raw. <laughs> 
It's tart. It kind of smells a bit like oranges, maybe lemons. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. You know what this reminds me of? This isn't in my notes. I was in New York City a few years ago. And my buddy, um, my buddy and I were hanging out there and he was like, hey, let's go to a cigar bar. Now, I'm not really much for cigars personally. Like I have nothing against them, just never really became a thing I do. But I was like, yeah, let's go get a cigar and drink some scotch. That sounds great. And being in that cigar bar, it smells like cigars, right? It smells like ash. It smells like smoke. It smells like whatever. And there was a taste when I'm, you know, dipping the end of the cigar into the scotch and smoke it like that. That reminds me of this. If you are a cigar lover and like to dip your cigar into, into scotch, I think this is going to go real well with, with your, your personality and your flavor profile. <sighs> mm. So clearly ash, like, to, you know, tobacco, a uh, little shoe leather in there. The um, I always describe leather's taste more about the way leather smells and then just, you know, there's always that really close tie between smell and taste. But in this case, it's it's just, it tastes the way that leather smells. It just does. And it's good. <laughs> hmm. There's some oaky tannins going on there too. So that's the obvious stuff. So now let's dig a little bit deeper and let's go for some of the fruity bits. All right. I'm actually going to add a couple drops of water because I think that will help. And uh, you guys see how infrequently I do this, but it's not even that high ABV. It's just, I think this will go well with some drops of water. I don't recall if I said, probably not, because I don't remember, 56.3% ABV. <sighs> On the nose, I'm getting a little bit more berries, actually. Hmm. It doesn't change too much with the water, but but it is picking up a little bit more of the uh, Spanish wine influence there. You're getting like, I want to say it's not raspberries, it might be like blackberries or I don't think it's blueberry. It's definitely some sort of a berry because it's it tastes almost juicy. Um, it's interesting. There's there's definitely like a orange marmalade thing going on. Hmm. Salty, uh, like maritime notes, which makes some sense, but surprising, a, a little surprising because everything else is just overbearing. I, I didn't think I'd pick out salt, but I definitely am. And it's uh, it's pretty good. Let's see. Hmm. You could tell I like a whiskey because I often don't spend this long on the, <laughs> on the nosing and the tasting, but. I just kind of want to keep drinking it. The main thing that you're going to like, you you don't typically buy this for its, you know, red wine influence. You're buying this because it's smoky and it does not let down there at all. What it does have and what you're paying for is not as astringent um, in the smoke. It's not young whiskey. I mean, 10 year old scotch is still fairly young. But when you're talking about an Octomore, it's twice the age is a typical release. So something to think about there. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and talk a little overall. And then let me tell you a little story. So <clears throat> the very first time that I ever had Octomore, it was at the very first Bastards Ball. So we're talking 2019, I think, or 2018, somewhere in there. What year is it? 2022? Yeah, man. All right. So I think 2019. And it was it was at this little. <laughs> so. All right. There was this house. <laughs> this is how this is starting, right? So before the Bastards Ball started, there was this party. It was a pre-party. And I got an invite to this, and I ended up showing up with some of the other YouTube channels, and we all just kind of poured into the into this house that was being rented, and there was a bar in the back, and there were couches, and there were a bunch of people there. Probably like 50, 60 people, not a ton, but there was, you know, there was plenty of people. And it was really cool because I walked in and people knew who I was. It was just a great moment. And then they were like, hey, Bill, you know, all the good whiskeys are in the back. It's like, I like good whiskeys. <laughs> so I ended up having a dark cove that day. I had a, a red breast, uh, something or other really old. Um, 
uh, that was that was really cool. But I remember it was the first place I ever had Octomore. And I want to say it was the 8.3, but at the time I just didn't know anything about Octomore and I just didn't, it didn't sink in enough. Probably have pictures of it, but I, I don't know where those pictures are. Either way, it was an older version of Octomore. And I remember tasting it and just being like, I love peated whiskeys. This is like the epitome of what it could possibly be. This is just smoke in a bottle. And it was super good. And I remember being like, I don't even want to have a second one because I feel like everybody else here should have some. So Anyway, that was the first time I ever had Octomore. So when this came up for sale, I didn't even hesitate. I just was like all about it. I'm like, I need to get this whiskey. So now let's talk about the other side of this. <clears throat> this whiskey was $287 and $273.85. The 85 cents is killer. So that's tough. Not to mention you can't buy this. Like it's not it's not available anymore. It's all sold out. The only way that you're getting this at this point is on the secondary market. So is this one worth it? Well, I mean, I can maybe give you some advice that will lead you to whether you want to buy the sixth edition next year. <sighs> Let's take the scope of the money out of this. Um, not the value. Like, I'll consider value for money, but I, I can't make assumptions about your ability to spend almost $300 on a whiskey. So I'm not going to. Is this worth, compared to some of the other things I've had, is this worth $273.85? No. And here's why. I think this is designed to... I almost hate to say this. I feel like Octomore is delicious, but it's designed to be extremely smoky. So... The word gimmick isn't one I like to use very much, and I kind of don't want to use it here, but I hope you understand what I'm getting at. Like, they are trying to be the most smoky whiskey that they are. They just do it extremely well, and I have zero complaints about that. But when I think about the fact that you could probably get the regular Octomores, like the 0.1, 0.2, for, you know, 75% of the price, that is something that I think is better to spend your money on. If you are looking for something that is exclusive, that's what you're paying the extra 25% on top of the regular Octomores for, plus a little bit of aging. But, you know, like I said, 10 years is not not a huge amount of time to, to sit in a warehouse. And, you know, you get things like Glenfiddich that is aged for 12 years and they could sell super cheap. So that I don't think it's the, the rent that you're paying on the barrel. So I will not be buying a special edition of Octomore again despite the fact that I really like this bottle and I'm planning on drinking every drop here and probably sooner than I should. But it would be very hard for me to recommend this for the price or, you know, for the the price increase over the regular releases. Should you buy an Octomore of any sort? Absolutely. Do it. Spend the money. It's awesome. You're going to love it. This one probably isn't worth the extra money to me personally, but I'm really happy that I bought it. So I guess do with that information what you will. I, I guess I would say try it as my official rating, but it's more like it's it's a hard one to just give any sort of advice on. All right. So anyway, um, two things. Number one is I am going to be giving a little bit of this away because I think this is too important for me not to share. So I'm going to give two samples of this away. Uh, anybody who joins the Patreon at any level before the end of the weekend. So it, today's uh, March 30th. I'm uh, filming on this. So tomorrow's April 1st. So this will come out on April 1st. Um, anybody who joins the Patreon in any capacity before the end of the weekend will be entered into a giveaway as long as you live in the U.S. Uh, to receive a sample of this. And I'll pick two people at random and we'll do that. So that'll be really cool. So check out, you can find a link to that down in the description below. There's other reasons to join the Patreon as well, by the way. So, um, but I think this one is too good not to share. Uh, so I'm going to share it. Other than that, uh, the other thing. So um, uh, actually, I guess that really was it, huh? So anyway, if you are interested in more Brook Lottie, check out the classic Lottie over here. If you'd like to learn more about Port Charlotte, check it out over here. All right. Thank you guys very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Thank you.